Hey guys, it's Matt the Woodshed Barber, and today we're talking about the Babyless Low Pro FX1 All Red Edition. So guys, before we even get started on this, big shout out to Dennis Joseph over at Babyliss for sending me a boo koodle of tools. Did I just say boo koodle? So let's talk about these tools. The all red Babyliss Low Pro FX. One, I, I will say the naming of tools has gotta be difficult, but man, it's getting a little crazy sometimes. I mean, FX1, still the Low Pro FX. So it's the Low Pro FX, FX1, all red. Oh. It gets confusing with the names. But anyway, so I mean, this thing is just stacked with features. So let's just go ahead and dive into these things. Pop the hood. Two JZ and no shit. So let's talk about the power of these tools. Now, this is going to be very easy because both of them come with the all new N1 brushless motor. They both come with 6,800 RPMs, which I mean, I, I would prefer closer to 7,200 RPMs. That seems to be the sweet spot. That's where the, uh, I believe the boost took it. Um, but Regardless, it's a very quiet, nice sounding clipper. And so, and it, once again, you're working off the battery platform on these. So let's just go ahead and give it a sound. Oh, shit. <laughs> There we go. That's okay. So you do have the battery that comes in and out and it shows you how much is left in the battery while it's running. Also, you can hit, hit that button at the bottom and it shows you too. Quiet running clipper and the smooth running, much the smoothest low pro we've had. Uh, plenty of power too. I mean, it goes through everything you need it to go through perfectly. I mean, no problems, no snags, no pulls. Uh, that is a combination of the good motor, that N1 motor, and a good blade, that new MIM blade. But we'll get to that here in a second. And with the trimmer, not gonna forget this time. It is louder, but that has to do, once again, talking about Babyliss, that has to do with the blade. Regardless, comes with the graphite 2.0 blade. This thing is very, very powerful. Goes through everything, cuts everything perfectly fine. And so 6,800 RPMs, quiet motors, interchangeable batteries, which I've talked about that and I will talk about that later on in the video as far as my impression of the FX1 system. But as far as the amount of power these tools have, I mean, you kind of can't top it. The, the only thing that has ever topped it is that vector motor. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that some of them blow up. That is the most powerful tool I've used outside of detachables. And sometimes that thing is even more powerful than that. So I would say power on these, 9.5 out of 10. The blade, let's talk about the blades on these. Let's talk about the clipper first. So the clipper does come with this MIM blade, which means metal injected molding. And talking to Dennis, what he says that, you know, with this kind of process of actually putting a metal and a polymer together to create a, a metal inside this containment unit, this, this mold, you can actually do a whole lot more detailed work with it. And so we've seen this before with the JRL blades. It has reservoirs within the teeth and inside the blade as well that can keep and harness lubricant and oil and keep it running smoothly. Now, I don't, blade oil is so, such a fine viscous fluid. I don't know if it may be the right lubricant to put in those pockets. I've seen people take these off and put uh, uh, the Anda 7-in-1 Blade Care on it. I've seen people use uh, synthetic lube, like, like grease, 
and put in those little pockets and then put the blade on and then they oil it from there. So I don't know what the best care of this is. This is one of the parts of the barber industry that seems to be ever changing is how can we get the best longevity, best, you know, performance, uh, best lubrication, best heat resistance out of our blades. So it's an ever-changing part of the barber industry. And, and right now it's kind of in a limbo. So as far as the blade goes, it cuts super well. It has kind of the same um, uh, blade shape, blade platform as the Vapor Blade. You know, it's, and people want to differentiate between the two. It's, it's the, the fade blade shape, but it does have those little tracks, those air vents on there. And so it does, in my opinion, grab hair better, cut cooler than a typical fade blade. So blade for this thing, especially with innovation, everything going forward, the blade is a 10 out of 10, guys. This thing cuts like butter. So 10 out of 10 on the blade for the clipper. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the FX1 trimmer. Now it's, you know, like I've said before, Babeless's trimmer blades are loud. And, you know, this, this, the, the noise aside, it does come with the Graphite 2.0 blade, which is, in my opinion, one of the best blades Babeless has made. I would say if I put Babeless top three blades, I would put number one, the original FX1 blade. They just hit it out of the park with that from round one. Number two, I would put the Graphite 2.0 blade. And number three, that blue FX blade, I mean, it is fire, guys. That thing cuts through everything. Um, it might be my favorite blade right now just because it's so new and it's blue. I like blue, as you can tell. Um, but the Graphite 2.0 blade with this M1 motor is a nice pairing. Cuts through everything perfectly well. Nice sharp lines. Uh, Babeless blades do have a tendency to snag on the beard. That's what, like I've said before, I'm going to keep on saying it until somebody tops it. That Stylecraft Saber cyborg whichever one you want to use or any of their tools paired with the x pro steel blade with the one cutting blade it's the best on the market guys it doesn't snag doesn't pull doesn't do anything harsh to the skin and as good as these blades are under here sensitive areas under the beard that's the only place i will not use these because you know a lot of these companies are having trouble figuring out how to to duplicate what Stylecraft has done with that X-Pro blade. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the geometry on the steel blade or the cutting blade, but regardless, it's the king right now. But because this right here is so good, so right next to it, I'm gonna have to give this one a 9.5 out of 10. You're in dire need of an upgrade. Systemic, top to bottom. Let's compare it to the original Low Pro. Now me, I made these the Woodshed Barber Edition, so I painted them blue. Um, but if you compare shapes, compare little features here and there, you've got a much better lever. You've got a broader swing on the lever. You have a less harsh click. Now, me personally, man, that's a fine thing to tune. I don't know what it is. The original Low Pro, I never had that much trouble with the clicks. I think that it was a little stiff at times. The new one is almost a little too loose. I've tightened up the, the screw on it, all that stuff. It's just a little too loose. I'll, it'd be pretty neat if they could come up with a different kind of uh, insert that you could put inside that click that maybe makes it a tighter click and or less tighter click to where you can actually you know adjust it a little bit and make it to your preference. But the, the, the changes does not stop there. Um, a smaller switch, so it's not near as huge. It does have you know that space at the bottom for the battery, but they have made the low pro F, the low pro FX clipper much more ergonomic. They've taken some some bulk out of the sides. They uh, made the uh, the thumb indention a little bit smaller, so it's, it just fits your hand a little bit better. It's just all around a much better design clipper. I mean, one thing that I really like that they did is they didn't abandon their design as much as they refined it they noticed what we were saying about it like oh this feels like this this feels like this we weren't completely dogging it but they realized hey how can we take this already unique design that we've worked hard at and just make it better and i really like that because like whenever i think about redesigning clippers 
you know, I think about probably the best example of it was the original Wall Senior. You know, they took that huge classic design of the corded senior and turn it into the cordless senior by just changing the shape but keeping the nuance of the original tool there and they did that with this one so I, i've got to give them huge props for that for the clipper i mean it's very very similar uh everything that they did i would say kind of addressed the problems i had with the original um but i would just say if there, if there was a way to adjust those clicks like maybe a different tension spring inside of that little click knot that little click uh click bar that's in there to where maybe it's a tighter click I, I don't know but you know having an adjustable click it, it would it would kind of make this more personable to us um but overall i mean everything from the design of making the screw inside of it red that was that was just smart and so i've got to say when it comes to the clipper guys design 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 what a smart design now, let's talk about the trimmer when it comes to design. Now, you think that this is just, just as easy. It's not really. Um, I do think that they adjusted things as far as the ergonomics a little bit better. You know, they pushed the, uh, you know, they put the uh, the finger grooves that's on the back of the trimmer a little bit further up, a little bit further up on the, the, the trimmer to where it's actually where we really hold it more. Um, I think they made the switch a much more comfortable switch to, switch, to lean over to. Um, it did throw me off because I was used to my original because I used my trimmer for a long time uh, where the clipper didn't really get me the trimmer did and I would you know get, I got so used to just dropping down to do that but now I don't even have to drop down I just I just do that so smart design on that um, they did have to fatten the bottom a little bit for the battery that's expected I do think as far as that goes the uh, original was a little bit more comfortable around the base Really? Nothing. God, I'm shameless. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, overall, fantastic design. I would say, design-wise, they took it the same direction, but it's not as perfected. So I would say 9 out of 10 for the trimmer. So price. Price you're going to find these around $200 each. I think this right here is going to be around 210 on Amazon. This right here will be right around like 190, $200. I mean, so you're in that ballpark range. I do think you can probably find some better deals out there. Maybe you even have find a, a combo deal. I did not search for one, so I don't know. But as far as the price goes, you do have to realize what you're getting into. You're getting into the platform. Now, I've spoke with Dennis a lot about the whole FX1 thing, and so I think maybe this is a good time to talk about that because, you know, how much you pay into this is how much you're getting out of it when it comes to this new platform. And now granted, he hooked me up, man. I've got I've got seven tools right now that work off the FX1 platform, seven. So in the future, whenever they come out with a new tool, which Dennis said probably later this summer, they're gonna be doing you know, tool only options. So let's say they come out with a new tool. Let's say they come out with an FX3 trimmer that works off this platform, which you guys know I love that trimmer. I may have a tool only option to purchase that trimmer where I don't have to pay for the battery because I've already got these batteries. Because let's be real guys, if I've got 70 of these batteries floating around the shop, I don't need to have them in each of their trimmers. That means there's some of these tools I'm not using constantly. So finding a new tool you like you just have to get the tool only option bam cost averted at the same time you also have to think about you know whenever you get into a platform like this they are trying to to wrangle you in and so all these tools initially will cost a little bit more than you think that they should you know the, the, the fx1 clipper the main fx clipper is like i think 230 to 260 i've seen it as low as 230 but i mean when it first came out it was 260 it's like Damn, man, that's that's a lot. But regardless, I do think that this is a a very good platform. They've got things in the pipeline that they're they're doing. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. Which, by the way, the stands that came with this, even though I don't like those little bitty flimsy stands, they look dope. So, and that's not what I use to charge these with. By the way, I will show you my my charging base. 
Um, he sent me three of those things. So, I mean, I, I've, I'm stacked when it comes to these batteries. And I like the way that they was daisy chain onto each other. So I have one plug charging seven of my tools. That's pretty awesome. Um, like if I, if I was to work at, you know, a shop again to where I had a limited station or if I had to have a boss that'd be like, dude, you can't have 47 clippers in here. Sorry, bro. What did you say? If that was to happen, I probably would lean a lot more towards having something like that to where I could have tool options without having to have a whole lot of things plugged in. It's, it's a very interesting thing. So I would say, is the FX1 platform what I thought it was originally? Yes. I, I do think that there are some problems with it, and I've expressed those to Dennis. He's listened. He's been very kind and, and, and absorbent of any criticism. But at the same time, I don't think I had the same foresight of seeing how, hey, they're just starting this thing. There are so many different options they can do with this. And let's talk about one perk here. When it comes to your favorite clipper dying, you're, let's say you, you've been going for seven, eight haircuts, you've been trucking along, and all of a sudden it dies on you. What usually has to happen whenever that happens? You have another clipper of the same kind waiting for you, which ups the cost. That's why we're talking about this in the price category. It ups the cost, or you have to switch to a different clipper, which is maybe not tuned exactly like this one is. So instead with this, grab another battery, throw it in, keep cutting. I've got to say that's, that's a very, it's a very rare problem for me, but it is a problem that has now been solved. So kudos to the guys over at Babelist for thinking outside the box, doing things differently, and also being flexible with their thoughts. You know, this is something I say to all my customers all the time. You know, my, my dad was a pastor and he had some hilarious and fun sayings that he'd always throw out there. And one of them was that, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but there was actually a beatitude missing from the Bible. And that was, uh, blessed is he who is flexible for he shall not get bent out of shape. It's funny and it sticks with you. And so when it comes to things that we do in the shop, if you remain flexible, you don't get so bent out of shape, man. You don't get so upset about stuff. And I think that, you know, doing what he's doing, creating new tools for barbers, we, we're sticklers for stuff, man. We're traditionalist on one side, then we want to have the newest, brightest, shiniest thing on the other. So we're hard to, we're finicky. We're very hard to please. So kudos for coming up with something and remaining flexible enough to change it here and there. It's, it's a big dive to get into this, to this brand, to this, you know, this platform, but is it worth it? I think in the long haul it will be. And I think right now, especially if you're a babyless lover, which I mean, guys, they make great tools. Do it. And you'll probably be pretty happy you did. So price, I would say nine out of 10. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. Okay, enough of that. I know what you guys are probably thinking. How do they perform? How do these things work in the shop? Well, like I said, cuts through everything like you'd expect. The blades cut like butter. Good sounds, except for the trimmer blade, which maybe there's a fix to that. I'm going to be researching that more and more. But overall, these guys, guys these, these things cut fantastically. I did have one little weird annoyance. It did not affect the cut at all. But maybe be putting this out here, maybe it'll, you know, more people will speak up if they're having this problem. I have not had this problem with the other clippers. But this clipper, whenever I'm, I'm fading with it, it'll make this noise. Let me see if I can get to duplicate it. It's not doing it right now, but I do have a video of it doing it. So roll the film. I don't know what that is. So just bear with me on that. It did not affect the cutting, but that it did the two or three different haircuts of just like, 
and it's something to do with how this blade is, is pushing. I, I don't know, but I didn't like it. That's the only thing I'll say about the performance. But besides that, guys, it cuts fantastically. Um, no problems outside of that. Um, performance overall for the clipper and the trimmer, I'm going to say it's a solid you know, 9.5 out of 10. Could it be better at times? Yeah, it has to do with sound and whatever that little thing was. But besides that, and the fact that I wish this was a little bit of a stiffer lever, these guys, these are, these are top-notch tools. So, yeah, performance and final thoughts, I guess. I would say roll with that. So, guys, thank you for watching. Please click that like button, subscribe, comment down below. Keep those comments humble and kind. And as always, I'll check you on the next one.